Hey everyone, Jonathan Blackwood here from Commercial Integrator. Uh, welcome to another three questions interview. Today, I am very lucky to be joined by Dan Smith of LG. Dan, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. I think this is a subject that uh, both of us are getting asked a lot about. So I think it's a very timely uh, set of questions. Yeah, so much so that we're spending the entire month talking about digital signage and video walls. And I know LG uh, video walls especially um, has a lot of different options and has a lot of different insight into that category. So uh, right off the bat, what are the different video wall options that LG does have to offer for integrators and their clients? Well, you know, we've seen a broad request uh, of what types of video walls, what they want to do with them, where they want to put them. So we're proud that uh, we offer, of course, LCD video walls, which are the traditional uh, video walls I think that most people are familiar with. But we also offer OLED video walls. And uh, if you've been looking at LG lately, we've had an explosion of LED offerings. So we have LCD, OLED, and LED video wall offerings in terms of technology. We're seeing a lot, at least on our side, we're seeing a lot of video wall implementations in the lobby, but we're also seeing a lot in conference rooms and corporate boardrooms. What are the different considerations from one space to the other? Good question. There are definitely differences. Uh, let's, let's start with lobbies. So in the lobbies, I think aesthetics is really important. When you want to put something in the, the lobby, you want it to look pleasurable, you want it to be non-obtrusive, uh, you just want to see the video image. So uh, we offer trim kits, we offer unique designs, uh, we focus a lot on image quality. Uh, but also when it's in a lobby, you want to think about remote management, you know, uh, the, the people that are running the AV business, the people that are responsible for keeping it up and running, they need to be able to see that remotely. So we've built a lot of new technologies in that allow you to get a tremendous amount of information back from the video wall live to be able to tell if it's health, its status and what's going on with it. Also, you know, when you look at the, the, the lobby video wall, people tend to like to go very large. So resolution is very important. Uh, you you want to make sure that the, the resolution is adequate. Uh, if someone's going to be within three feet of it, you want very small, detailed pixel for pixel information. So if you're going to do a four by four LCD video wall, you want to make sure you have a large uh, high res image to be able to drive it. Uh, but also, if you think about it, when you put it in a lobby, there's often a lot of glass too. So another factor is the brightness. How bright does the display need to be? What's appropriate for the environment? Uh, we offer them in a variety of brightnesses depending on the application, as well as haze finishes. So how much does it reject ambient light and how well does it do in higher bright environments? Um, also in the lobby, you have the potential uh, interaction physically with the public or the people. So you want to think about, okay, how, how am I going to protect this product? How am I going to protect the people that are gonna be around the product? Um, but you know, those, those are general things, but those things kind of change a little bit depending on what type of technology you're using. For instance, an LCD video wall. An LCD video wall, you can touch it, you may get fingerprints on it. It can take a minor impact, but not a large impact. Uh, so with LCD video walls, you know, you may want to do touch even in a lobby. So if you need to special treat that display for durability or touch, that's one thing you should consider. The other thing to think about is LED. So when you go large scale in a lobby, you may not want a bezel. You may want a, a bezel list, no lines in the image. And we've done a lot of things with LED lately that have made it better suited for an environment where it might actually get touched. Meaning we have done different surface treatments on different displays. Uh, we have made them flat so you don't actually feel the LED. It protects the LED. We have done image enhancement by reducing reflectivity. We have done smudge proofing. We've done all sorts of surface treatments on LED. That wasn't something you would see really a couple of years ago. And then if we're talking about lobbies, we could also continue talking about OLED because the thing that's really cool about OLED is it's very light, it's very vivid, and it's flexible. So in a lobby environment, you may want to do a curved display. <clears throat> OLED has image capabilities that's unlike anything else in the industry. So if you have something that's on the display where you need the best possible image, maybe it's art uh, or it's digital art or it's black and white photos or uh, digital art that's uh, computer generated, things like that, really OLED is still the best technology if you look at all three of them out there. So 
in the lobby, you can take a look at all of those factors as well as those technologies. But then when you move into a boardroom or a conference room, it gets a little bit different. Uh, you need to consider how loud is it? So we do our video walls with no fans. You need to consider the HVAC loading. If it's gonna be big, will it create heat that's in there? Uh, is the resolution and size good enough for the content that you're doing? And now when we're talking about resolution and size, let's go back into the LCD versus OLED versus LED. If you don't want bezels or lines in the image, then you're going to need to go with LED. Or if you're doing LCD, you wanna pick an odd ratio of screens, meaning not a two by two or a four by the four, but you want like a three by three. The reason I'm saying that is you do not want that crosshairs right in the middle of the screen a lot of times. In two by two, there's a intersection of displays with LCD video walls or OLED right in the middle of the screen. If you're doing LED, doesn't matter. But something to think about when you're doing LCD. The other thing is when you look at a conference room, it's usually part of a system, meaning you may have a controller in there. You may have a jack pack, a remote jack pack in there or something like that. That Now, I don't just need a display. I also need something that can communicate with a touchscreen controller, a fixed position controller uh, with multiple inputs or something like that. So you need to think about the interface capabilities. And that's why we built the, uh, uh, like the Crestron connected functionality into a lot of our displays. Um, and another thing to think about is when we move to LED, sometimes people are used to getting a little bit different experience and it might be a little bit more difficult. The other thing that's important if you move into a conference room is people are going to be connecting to that display and using that display, different people almost every hour, correct? So what you need to think about is what's the user experience? Now we're all familiar with the user experience for LCD and OLEDs just like it, but sometimes LED can be a little bit more difficult in a different user experience. So that's something to think about. We've actually at, at LG, we are now actually using the same controllers we use for our OLED and our LCD. What does that mean? That means that when you turn it on, the user interface you get is exactly the one you're used to with using any of our displays. Matter of fact, it even comes with the standard LG remote and it even has a brightness sensor. So it can adjust to the ambient light that's in the room. So all that package together in a conference room, you get a different user trying to interface with that display every hour, it's simple for them. It's much easier. So you need to think about that user experience where in the lobby, AV guys are gonna run it, they're gonna turn it on, it's gonna run all day. So it's very different there. So good questions. Yeah, and, and a ton to think about, uh, a ton to think about in, in those corporate environments, but also as things begin to open up more, what other spaces are you seeing video walls being implemented uh, moving forward? Wow, you know, <laughs> that's a broad question and I'll, I'll give you kind of a broad answer that uh, if you think about the video wall business, uh, we are seeing them, uh, of course, we just talked about conference rooms and lobbies, but in addition to that, retail. There's a large amount of retail business. Uh, digital signage could be just about anywhere in the retail business. Digital out of home advertising uh, could be in a grocery store. It could be just anywhere. It could be in a mall. Uh, think about command and control environments. So they need large video walls. Uh, there are some areas where they like to show art uh, uh, to make it more of a environmental and a experiential type of uh, interface with the display. Uh, if you think about wayfinding, transportation, uh, sports venues, entertainment venues, museums, um, we even see security, you know, security applications where there's a control room where they're looking at a lot of different video cameras all at the same time. We see a lot of that too. So I, I think there's a, an enormous number of places where a video wall is the appropriate solution. Yeah, and I, I know that LG, I mean, as you kind of showed throughout this interview, LG has a lot of information for integrators and their clients about where video walls fit and the different considerations that you need to make for where you're putting them. And there's so many different markets and so many different considerations to make. If anyone in our audience wants to learn more about what LG can provide in terms of products and in terms of insight and information, how can they find out more about you guys? Well, if you go to lge.com uh, slash us slash business, or you type in LG commercial displays, it'll take you to the location where you're able to find information on all the products we've talked about.
Well, I encourage everyone to check it out. I mean, LG looms large in the industry and, and provides some really incredible installations and products. So please do check that out. Um, Dan Smith of LG, thank you so much for joining us for three questions. Appreciate the invite.